Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In this video, we will discuss the single phase bridge rectifier with RLE load, resistive, inductive, and the battery source. Okay, so circuit diagram is shown in front of you. Here you can see the supply, sinusoidal supply. Let's suppose Vm sin of omega t is being applied. Here is the bridge rectifier circuit, and here you can see the load. It consists of the resistive part, inductive part. and the voltage source let's represent that voltage source with e that may be a battery that you are going to charge and if it is a dc motor then you can say it is the back emf of your machine so the load is connected between these two point point a and point b now let's see the waveforms which will be appearing across the load terminal as it is the full wave rectifier so full wave rectified sine wave will appear across the Load terminals. So this is the voltage waveform, right? And as there is the inductive load, so the current will be lagging behind the voltage. So here you can see the minimum value of the current is over here, and as the voltage is increasing, the current is increasing. At this point, uh, when you have the negative slope in the uh, voltage waveform, now the current starts decreasing. and uh, then from this point onward the current start increasing in the next cycle again so this is the current waveform for your this particular uh, load the continuity of the load current depends upon the inductance if this inductance is very high you will observe a continuous current what do you mean by the continuous current here you can say it is not going to become zero at any instant of time it is um, always positive it is um, changing between the minimum value this i min and the maximum value this is let's suppose i max so it is changing between these two values right and the average value of this uh, current is this one that is the tc current and let's suppose okay so i'm just going to suppose that that this is the um, average value of the current now in the steady state um, for Uh, the start of um, current in every cycle let's suppose if it is at this point then this cycle is going to end at the same level of the current and in the next cycle the current by the end will be same so in the steady state the current at the start of the cycle and current at the end of the cycle will be same in steady state operation okay so the continuity of this current depends upon the inductance if the inductance is going to be low then there may be the discontinuity in your current so you can have the discontinuous current at the load it depends upon the value of the inductance for sufficiently high inductance you can say this is the current and if you have the infinitely high inductance then your load current will be considered continuous so in that case you can say the load current may be like this right so when your inductance is approaching to infinity the load current will be the continuous current straight line current because inductor does not allow the change in the current okay now uh, for the half cycle the diode d1 and the d2 will be conducting in the positive half cycle of your source so the path of the current will be like this right and uh, for the rest of the half cycle the path of the current uh, will be like that through the diode d3 through the load through the diode d4 back to the source so direction of the current will be opposite in this source so source current will be positive for the half cycle and for the rest of the half cycle it will be negative so that you can see if we look at this um, first part of the current waveform for the first half cycle so from the source it is positive right and in the next half cycle of your source voltage the current is negative from your source so source current is negative right exactly the flipped version of this one and in the positive half cycle the source current is positive so source current uh, average value is zero because you have the positive part as well as the negative part so average value of the source current will be zero however your load current average value is not zero because it is positive and um, that will be let's suppose this one
right okay now let's look at the um, equation with the help of which we can solve uh, the current that is passing through the rle load so just observe this loop if d1 is on and d2 is on and the path of the current is like this so at this instant of time your supply voltage let's suppose that that rms value of the supply voltage is vs so it will be written as under root 2 vs into sine of omega t under root 2 to get the peak value right where vs is the rms value so if this is the rms you can represent this voltage source with this expression so under root 2 vs sine of omega t this must be equal to the voltage across all the components the voltage across this resistance is r i naught voltage across this inductance is l d i naught by dt and um, the voltage over here is e so sum of all of these voltages must be equal to your supply voltage so we have um, set up the differential equation right solving this differential equation you will get uh, the expression for the current so if we solve it for the current if we solve this differential equation right so that will be equal to under root 2 vs by z into sine of omega t minus theta this theta is basically the angle because of this impedance plus the exponential part a1 into e raised power minus rl into t minus e by r so i assume that you can solve the differential equation so solving this you will get this expression okay so in this the impedance is um, given as r square plus omega l square and the under root and the impedance angle can be calculated by tangent inverse of omega l by r because you can um, if you remember the imp triangle impedance triangle this is the impedance this one is resistance and um, this one is omega l or xl and this is the angle theta so tangent theta is um, omega l by r so theta can be written as tangent inverse of omega l by r from the impedance triangle so this is the angle of the impedance and the magnitude of the impedance is given by this expression okay so the differential equation um, that is shown over here is rewritten in this now we need to evaluate this constant a1 using the boundary conditions so now let's look at that how we can select the boundary condition if you look at the current waveform it is going to start from here and then uh, it is going to end at the um, at this point at the end of uh, this uh, voltage cycle first positive voltage cycle so these two are the boundary points so at this point omega t is equal to pi if you observe this axis and at this point omega t is equal to zero and both of these points the value of the current is um, i naught in the steady state so i naught at zero and i naught at pi that is equal to let's suppose um, capital i naught so now we will be using the boundary conditions at this point or at this point to evaluate this a1 so let's consider this point when omega t is equal to pi so if omega t is equal to pi your i naught will be equal to let's suppose uh, capital i naught and omega t is equal to pi from here you can say t is equal to pi by omega so now you can use these values in this expression so i naught at pi right because omega t is considered equal to pi and uh, then you are going to replace this omega t with pi and uh, this t with pi by omega so you can write down this equation okay and then this will be equal to capital i naught and then we can solve it for a1 the constant a1 so that will be equal to this expression now use this a1 in this equation over here so you will get the exact expression for the current so using a1 in the above equation uh, you will get this expression right so here you can see the value of a1 that is used from here and it has been used in this equation we are replacing this a1 with its expression this is the expression for a1 
so our final equation for the current will be given by this equation okay now um, as we have seen that uh, that the current at the start of the cycle and at the end of the cycle is equal to i naught so now we are going to take omega t equal to 0 so if we take omega t equal to 0 this uh, current will be equal to um, i naught and this is going to become 0 so this equation can be written like this that i naught is equal to under root 2 vs by z sine of minus theta plus this expression okay now if we um, simplify this one um, you can go through these mathematical steps uh, we are basically working for the value of the i naught the initial value of the current or the final value of the current that will be the starting point of the next cycle so if you rearrange and uh, do some mathematical steps simplification so finally you will arrive at uh, this expression for the i naught so this is the current uh, at the start of the cycle that is under root 2 vs by z into sine of theta into 1 plus e raised power minus rl into pi by omega divided by 1 minus e raised power minus r, r by l into pi by omega so you can also write in terms of the time constant of the inductor so this is basically uh, this current you we have evaluated i naught either this one or this one both are same because i naught at 0 and i naught at pi is equal to i naught right okay now uh, if the inductance is not sufficiently high or um, the um, voltage source is uh, quite uh, high in level then you will observe the discontinuous current the discontinuous current means that your current has the zero levels in it in the waveform here you can see the zero and then the current is going to increase and then it is zero so if your e the voltage source that was connected in the load your load was r l e right so for that case if this e once the uh, supply voltage that is coming from uh, here right and if it is um, above this voltage source level e then there will be the flow of the current so the voltage at this point should be higher than the voltage at this point a should be higher than the voltage at this point the voltage e if that is the case then there will be the flow of the current then the potential difference will exist across rl so once your applied voltage a is higher than the battery voltage e then there will be the conduction so current is going to start assuming that that the inductance is not sufficiently high so the current waveform will be of this shape following the voltage wave shape if the inductance will be high then there may be the lag in the current waveform okay so the current is discontinuous over here and um, now let's uh, see that how we can determine uh, these angles alpha and angle beta okay we have seen the equation for the current that is um, i naught t is given by this expression and we have also worked out for the uh, constant a1 using the boundary conditions of the um, current waveform okay now um, in this case when our current is discontinuous so current at this point i of alpha that is equal to zero and similarly i of beta is equal to zero now we can use these conditions to work uh, for the a1 so now let's assume that that i of alpha is being considered so over here omega t will also be equal to alpha and uh, using omega t is equal to alpha time can be written as alpha by omega so now from this equation we can work out uh, the expression for a1 and then we can use it back over here in this equation to represent this current so using a1 in this equation we will get this expression right so this is the equation describing the current i naught now let's uh, take omega t equal to beta and at that time i naught of uh, t will also be zero as you can see from this equation so using this boundary condition uh, we can work out uh, for 
this expression okay so this i naught t will be set equal to 0 at omega t equal to beta setting it equal to 0 and then rearranging this equation we will get this expression and uh, finally we can write it in terms of alpha beta like this so this is the transcendental equation and uh, if you want to work out for the value of the alpha and beta so you can use the iterative techniques to solve this one starting from uh, one particular value of the beta and making a small increment if the uh, left hand side becomes equal to right hand side or uh, when this expression is going to give you the value 0 um, you can stop at that point you will be incrementing the beta in small steps and once the um, left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side that is equal to 0 so at that time you will stop and that beta will be the solution so it's a transcendental equation you can solve it using the iterative technique and you can find out the angle beta um, at which there will be the uh, current approaching to the uh, zero in this case it is quite simple you can uh, um, work for the angle alpha and beta quite easily because the current is exactly following the uh, voltage waveform resistive load is dominant however if the inductive uh, case will be dominant then you will have to use the iterative technique to find out the uh, values of alpha and beta so if I summarize this video, we have seen that uh, we can have the RLE load, resistive, inductive and the battery load. Your rectifiers are used for the charging of the batteries and if it is a DC motor drive, then your in voltage source may be representing the back EMF uh, in your machine. So we have seen that how we can establish the equation for the evaluation of the current in RLE load. And if your E um, is absent, if you do not have the uh, induced EMF, so um, even then these equations will be valid only uh, this part will become zero you can consider it equal to zero when you when you do not have this e so your equation will be uh, reduced to this part rest of the analysis will remain same so finally the expression those we have obtained for uh, i naught in this this is going to become zero if your e is absent right and same is the case over here if you do not have the um, voltage source um, then this part is going to become zero so in this way you can work out for the uh, highly inductive load as well as for the rle load uh, the current expression and uh, you can carry out the analysis of the rectifiers in detail so that's all from this video thank you very much